we're going to take a look at a for loop and uh, we'll be calculating the bouncing ball uh, problem. It's uh, often used to demonstrate uh, well, for loops and uh, some variable manipulation. But I thought it was a pretty good example to demonstrate uh, a simple for loop and also to use a range and explain what that's all about. So the first thing I'm going to do is create some variables here and then I'll explain what I did. So you see three variables. The first one is dh and we're going to set that to an integer and we're going to take input from the user and we're asking the user to enter the drop height. So we need to know what that height's going to be. And remember in Python, well in pretty much any programming language, it the code always executes from the inner parentheses here to the outwards. So here the input function right here is asking the user, we're asking the user through the console to enter a drop height. They're going to enter something and whatever they enter is going to be cast as an integer and then that integer is going to be assigned to the variable dh and that uh, stands for the drop height. Okay, so in the next one we have what's called a bounce index. It's going to be some type of percentage and it's going to be the bounciness of the ball. And so here we're going to say, okay, enter the bounce index. And that bounce index is going to be, uh, when the user enters it, it's going to be cast to a float. And then the float, it, the, whatever number that uh, the user entered it that was cast to a float is going to be assigned to the variable bi for bounce index. And then the next one is the number of bounces, so how many times is it going to bounce? And that's going to be cast to an integer and then assigned to the bn. So bn stands for bounce number, bi stands for bounce index, and dh stands for, for drop height. And we have to do a little bit of uh, a, a slight, a little bit of algebra in order to get the next part of our formula, which we need, which is uh, we need to know what the bounce height is. Um, and it's just something we need in order to do this calculation. So I'm going to go ahead and type in something here. Since the bounce index, and we're just using, again, um, algebraic manipulation here, is equal to the bounce height divided by the drop height, then and this is just literally, you know, sixth grade math, this next part. The bounce height, or what we're going to call, uh, and we're actually not going to do much with this, but bounce height is going to be equal to the bounce index times the drop height. Okay. And so if this is the case here, bounce index is equal to this, then using uh, algebraic manipulation, we can solve for bh with this variable right here and end up with this little equation. Bounce height equals the bounce index times the drop height. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to say, okay, um, we need a starting point for the total distance traveled. Obviously, to start with, the total distance traveled is going to equal zero. It hasn't done anything. And we'll go ahead and comment this just so that we remember what this is. And uh, also, I, I usually don't, um, for whatever reason, my style is to not capitalize the comments. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. Okay. Now we have enough information to actually start solving the problem. So, of course, the idea is that given these three inputs from the user, we can calculate the actual distance traveled by the bouncing ball. All right, so the what we need to do is we're going to need a for loop to calculate this. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say for x in range, we're going to use range this time. And well, I'll go ahead and explain this range part real quick. This is saying for every number inside of this range right here, so whatever they entered for the uh, bounce number, uh, let's say the number was 10 or something, the range is, gonna, is going to go through uh, 10 iterations. So that's 10 iterations. Now, the, if, you were to, if, you were to, if you were to output x, the, you're not going to see, you're never going to get to the number 10. What's going to happen is in, uh, in range and in most uh, counting in computers, the number we actually start with is 0. So iteration 0 counts as the first iteration. So you will get, you will get 10 iterations, but it's actually going to calculate uh, it's going to, x is going to go through the numbers 0 through 9. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And, the, and that will be the numbers that are actually uh, output here for x. 
but it, it will add up to 10 iterations if, they, if we want uh, 10 bounces. Okay, so having explained that, the next thing that we need to do is we're going to use the formula that, uh, that we need. And so the total distance traveled, according to the information that we, that we had, is equal to the drop height plus the um, bounce index. So, uh, and we know up here, or excuse me, the bounce height. And we know right here that the bounce height is equal to bi times dh because we calculated that. So we can go ahead and just type that in. Bounce height, uh, bounce index times the drop height. Okay, so I'll go ahead and explain this line of code. So we're setting the total distance traveled is going to be equal to the total distance traveled plus the drop height plus the bounce index times the uh, the the drop height. So this part right here uh, in the in the parentheses is equal to your bounce height. This is the bounce height. Um, now the uh, the bounce height. Remember that's after the ball is dropped. So the ball is dropped from a certain height. So let's say the ball is dropped from like 25 feet, and then it bounces up to let's say uh, 10 feet or something like that. Well, then that that 10 feet is what's calculated right here. It's the it's the uh, the uh, the bounce height, what the amount of, of distance the bomb the, the ball travels back upwards, and we calculated that using this little simple algebraic formula. All right, so that number is added to the drop height. And then the drop height is added to whatever the distance traveled was before. So remember the plus this right here is equivalent to saying um, TD, TDT is equal to TDT plus all this stuff. So that, that's what this part right here means. Um, okay, so having said that, the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out what the drop height is after that. So the new drop height, because the drop height is going to change, right? Um, it's going to be the drop height is going to become whatever, uh, however high the ball bounced back up to. So let's say in our first example, the ball was dropped from 25 feet and then it bounced back up to, to let's say 10 feet. Then the new drop height is going to be equal to that 10 feet. So this right here is just a simple matter of saying, okay, let's set that equal to to that. So uh, we can just you know you type down. I'm pretty lazy. I just do the old cut and paste, and uh, there we go. So. Let's go ahead and make some comments here so that we know what this stuff is. This is drop height, of course I can't spell, plus the bounce height, and right here, there's a reason why I pause my videos all the time, okay, is drop height is set to the bounce. Simple enough. All right, and that's all we need to calculate uh, the total distance traveled. So the next thing we need to do is say, okay, now we need to output this stuff. So let's print this. And print is the function that's going to send the information to the console so that we can actually read it. So this is going to say the total distance traveled is going to be TDT. All right, so the loop is going to iterate through however many number of times the bounce, the, uh, bounce number is, and then it's going to calculate the total distance traveled, adding on the total distance traveled to the new calculation here every time, and then recalculating the drop height until finally we have gone through all the iterations of the bounces, and then we know the total distance traveled, period. All right, so um, we can uh, go ahead and run this. Yes, we have to save it. We're going to run it. Okay, so... For our example, we're going to say, okay, let's say the ball is dropped 25 feet, and the bounce index is going to be 0.5, and the uh, number of times of the the number of bounces, let's say that that's going to equal three. Hit enter, and the total distance traveled is 65.625 feet, and that is how we calculated the total distance traveled. So I'll just let this sit there for a minute so that you can check it out. All right, well, that's it. That's a nice little example of using a for loop, using our, our inputs, and uh, doing uh, the calculations with the variables. So that's it.